Hi there. <clears throat> so uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to um, share our story. Uh, and uh, my goal for, from this talk is to uh, have a lively Q&A. So um, where I'm happy to divulge all kinds of things, I will keep this uh, pretty generic um, uh, as, uh, as I tell this story. So uh, that introduction was great. Um, uh, I'd like to say a little bit about uh, kind of how we got into healthcare uh, and why uh, we thought we might be the right team to uh, gamify uh, social distancing. So uh, we got into healthcare. Uh, we've been around for about 15, uh, going on 16 years uh, in the entertainment and education space. Uh, making online games and, and mobile games uh, when mobile phones came out. Eight years ago, uh, I had a uh, daughter um, at seven days old. She ended up at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. It was a very scary uh, experience for new parents, as one might imagine. And um, uh, But she's happy and healthy. She just turned eight this past April. And... Um, uh, but I met uh, wonderful this wonderful team at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, and two years later, I um, I was uh, I wrote a grant an NIH grant with them. Sorry, sorry, my uh, my Siri is acting up. Uh, so, um, and so I uh, so we wrote an NIH grant uh, with uh, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Emory, and Georgia Tech. Uh, around teaching um, kids health and disease literacy. And, um, and so that's how we got into healthcare. Uh, and for the last um, six years, have been very passionate about that space. And uh, our philosophy uh, in, um, in using games is to, um, is to affect uh, behavior change. Uh, and we do that through an engagement first approach. So the first kind of the, the major indicator of how we can change behaviors is to engage. And we do that through uh, entertaining our users. Uh, then we're able to uh, sprinkle in the spinach, if you will, uh, sprinkle in the education, uh, and then uh, leverage cognitive behavioral uh, techniques to uh, empower and, and change behavior. So that was where we were coming from. Uh, March uh, March came around. Uh, we had uh, a wide range of, pr of projects that we were working on, and um, uh, and they all came to a, a screeching halt. Uh, and so, uh, we unlike a lot of services companies, uh, you you know you should have a, a runway, if you will. Um, and uh, but we're constantly investing and in, and in building products. Our goal is to become a product and a services company. And so uh, we were pretty much dead in the water when these four projects um, came to a halt. And so uh, we looked around, we wanted to keep the team and the dream alive. And, um, and so we, we thought, well, how could we be part of the solution? Um, there was talk around leveraging uh, digital health for contact tracing. There was all sorts of, um, kind of negative um, aspects of it. Uh, and um, uh, not negative aspects, but uh, barriers to entry, if you will, uh, challenges with um, with contact tracing. And so we wanted to kind of take a, uh, a different uh, view of that. And so how could we be part of um, helping what we saw as the, the number one um, impact to uh, staying healthy, which was social distancing. And, um, and so uh, we decided to pitch this concept uh, we, we didn't have enough money to, to develop it. Uh, we had not gotten our PPP or had gotten PPP. So we pitched it to uh, one of the largest, let's say, telecom companies in the United States. And, um, and it, got, it got backed, it got greenlit, uh, which was a very exciting proposition for a company that was, um, not, we didn't know if we were gonna be able to survive. And so uh, we embarked on a journey with this telecom partner uh, to prove uh, the technology that would facilitate um, something that we could then gamify. So we took a, a dual approach. We were building a technical prototype uh, using um, or leveraging uh, your phone's Bluetooth low energy, uh, low, Bluetooth low energy technology, which is basically your personal network that your phone creates when you are broadcasting your Bluetooth signal. And so the idea was 
um, your device submits a signal. And could we, based on that signal strength that another phone would receive, uh, could we estimate uh, the distance? And so could we tell you um, how close you got to another phone for how long? Uh, and could we also um, show things like, uh, are you inside? Uh, are you outside? Uh, what, are, what are the activities that you're doing? Uh, all in the service of uh, practicing social distance. How am I doing? Um, we likened it to uh, steps and how steps became part of a lot of people's everyday health assessment. Uh, some people watch it very actively. How many steps do I have at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, what have you? Others look at it at the end of the day. Others don't look at it at all, but might, might assess their steps uh, as they look at Google Health or, or Apple Health. And so, um, so the idea was uh, maybe this could be Fitbit for social distancing. And, uh, and we were able to prove our uh, technology along with uh, our collaborators at this large telecom. This was a joint effort. Uh, and we were able to successfully show, uh, successfully show uh, how basically uh, these lines of demarcation. So I can show you that these are the people throughout the day that you came zero to six feet um, for a meaningful time. Uh, or six to 12 feet, or 12 to 24 feet. So in a way, and, and then we were able to create social bubbling so you could see kind of my, my network of people that I come in contact with, my family, um, I can see who they've come in contact with. And, and um, so we were create, that was the basis for, uh, for gamifying this solution. And, um, and the idea was it, with this, we could create all kinds of games. There could be ways that uh, kids could play this in, in a fun way and, um, and and college kids or teenagers and, and how might an adult leverage this or how might an employer leverage this uh, and, and make, make this an engaging experience, not a scary experience. Um, and all along making sure that we were very, um, we were taking privacy seriously and uh, all the data was stored on the phone, kind of you were empowered with your data, we weren't keeping it, uh, this was just about you. And so that was very exciting. Uh, we, we delivered a prototype. Uh, we delivered a go-to-market uh, solution. We had one of the largest telecom providers uh, in partnership. Uh, they were super excited about it. And, um, and we pitched uh, the, the, a larger team there um, and um, a larger budget. And this is how we're gonna do it. And, um, and the project got killed. So um, I don't have a ton of detail uh, of why uh, the project didn't uh, wasn't picked up. Um, we were just as disappointed as many uh, members of our partner were. So we were faced with a the potential. What do we do? How do we stay afloat? Um, and uh, right about that time, we scored our PPP. So we had a little bit of runway. Uh, and um, and we needed to decide how we kept the team together, how we could bridge to um, to finding more work, to finding funding for some of our projects. And we had to decide if we felt like what we had invested all this time in, um, which we had every we were given every right to use this technology. Uh, we were given lots of support from our partner. It was it just wasn't something that they were willing to take to market. So uh, we. Uh, <laughs> we had to figure out what that solution might be, what that go-to-market solution for this really neat technology, this algorithm that we had developed. Um, was it a direct-to-consumer solution? Was it a B2B solution that uh, was brought to you by public health institutes or healthcare hosp hospitals? Uh, was it regional? Uh, was it something that uh, employers might be interested in providing for their employees? So. As we look back, uh, there were probably some some challenges with how we did how we went about pitching this. Um, yeah, when you're when you have an idea like this, it, the best thing to do is pure customer discovery, where you're not selling, you're not pitching, you're um, you're describing what you feel is a problem. You are trying to validate that problem. You're trying to find authentic demand, and. Uh, as the pitch guy, the sales guy for Thrust, I would say that I was trying to do that, uh, but I was also pitching something that we had created uh, with this, uh, with our partner, with this telecommunications company partner. 
and something pretty amazing happened for us. Uh, large companies, uh, yeah, large companies, large institutions, large hospital systems, large public health organizations, huge school systems, school districts uh, started returning our call. Uh, we would reach out, about 80% would uh, you know, return our call and say we're interested in learning more. Uh, about half of those uh, ended up um, asking for proposals. Uh, and so it was a very exciting time. Uh, we thought we might be able to make this work. Uh, and we felt like our investment um, into this uh, solution was gonna be um, was gonna be our company savior. And uh, we were gonna really be able to impact uh, our community and, and, and the country at that. Um, unfortunately, um, it, and again, I don't have a lot of insights into why some of these, uh, why none of the deals closed. Um, it was, the sales cycle was very, very difficult. It didn't take much for a company um, to provide somebody, to provide feedback that they just didn't want to be in this space. It was uh, privacy issues. Um, uh, it just the, the, the reward wasn't worth the risk to a lot of these organizations. And so that was, uh, uh, that was something that we were, we were working through and we still thought we could take this to market. Um, and uh, we started working on a direct to consumer. Um, it, it was a pretty powerful solution. Um, it ended up coming, kind of becoming Fitbit meets Yelp for social distancing. Uh, I tell this story where I was able to take our solution into um, a, a grocery store uh, here in Atlanta. And it was one that was kind of billed as a, a safe, place to, to go into, a line out front, everybody six feet apart. Um, and um, But then once you got into the store, it was kind of a cluster. And uh, I was able to come out of that experience and show, well, these are the 60 people. This is right in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, these are the 60 people that I came in contact with. Some a safe distance, but most uh, not a safe distance. And unlike contact tracing solutions, I didn't, it didn't require critical mass. It didn't require that anybody else had the application. Uh, it was something that I was able to, to use and it uh, informed me and, and uh, you know, that this might not be something that I, I would do in the future. Um, that, I also have a story where the first day that my dentist opened up, I had missed my dentist appointment. I signed up to go in. My wife and my daughter also had appointments that they had missed. Uh, they were not comfortable going into the dentist. My wife couldn't believe that I was. I went into the dentist. Uh, and um, in my 45 minute session, I came in contact with three people. They were all wearing masks. They were all in basically hazmat body suits. Um, and I was able to share that with my wife and she was like, all right, well, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and make my appointment and, and make our daughter's appointment. So it was a really neat thing that um, for, for lots of reasons, um, isn't, isn't there, isn't out in, for the public to consume. And I think it's a real, um, it's a real shame. So, um, uh, and, and then, so it was still something that was like, all right, let's just put it out there. We don't have the right partnership. We don't have the right distribution strategy, but let's get this in people's hands. And then the last straw was um, in submitting it is, uh, we got rejected by Apple uh, and we fought that, um, but we weren't, weren't able to overcome that. We didn't have a healthcare public health partner at that point. And, um, and it was just too big of a battle for us. That was in, we were in survival mode um, to, to kind of fight. So um, I guess the, the green um, or the, uh, the light at the end of that tunnel for us or uh, the happy story is that we were able to bridge to our next projects and, and our team has signed some really neat uh, projects in this space. Um, but it's something that uh, feels like a failure. We feel like we, we let a lot of people down by not being able to deliver this. Uh, and the irony is, um, I guess about two weeks ago, um, people were still reaching out to us, um, but after the, uh, the protests, after a lot of people saw that, we saw at the protests, the large groups, the large gatherings, we felt like maybe social distancing isn't a thing. Uh, maybe this isn't worth fighting for. Uh, and it was something that um, we kind of just pivoted away from. Um, and then about three weeks ago, our phone started ringing again from schools. Uh, school districts that we had talked to in the past, um, wanting to uh, wanting to look at this solution for their uh, their students and their parents and their teachers, and uh, and it's a very fluid thing. It's it's kind of funny when I when I pitched this as a talk, I didn't really know how it would end. Uh, a week ago, two weeks ago, I didn't know what what I would talk about. 
Um, but what's interesting uh, is that uh, the, one of the largest school districts came back and said, we're ready to move forward. And uh, we put together a plan and delivered that on Monday. And then on Monday afternoon, uh, that the school was not going back to in-person school in the fall, one of the largest school districts. So um, another strike. Um, and then uh, to kind of put a bow in it, uh, the telecommunications partner that we had partnered with that was supporting us from afar literally reached out to me this morning and said that uh, they want to they want to revisit uh, this technology that we built together and and um, who knows where, where that will go but uh, but that's our uh, that's our experience um, I'm still still bullish about what we've created I still think it's a platform for um, I, I think for lots of game developers and, and the creation of lots of games uh, to, to kind of um, engage and inform and educate uh, in fun ways. Or I think uh, the kind of, the, the amount of people that you come in contact with uh, uh, at establishments throughout your day uh, will become part of our, our health assessment, probably just like steps, not something that uh, we actively need to be monitoring. Um, you know, like every hour and alerting every hour, like uh, we were with our, our social distancing app. Um, but I think it can be something that uh, will make us smarter, uh, will help us be educated on uh, our behaviors. Uh, and I think it will help, um, it just, it would be nice to be able to have. Uh, and, and the last thing I think, uh, as we are experiencing kind of uh, uh, this pandemic that we don't really have our, our head, head and hands around, uh, and the challenges that we've had with uh, privacy issues and, and contact tracing is that um, we felt like contact tracing solutions weren't going to work, uh, needing critical mass, uh, people just not being engaged, it being episodic and kind of reactionary. Um, in a crawl, walk, run, we felt a solution like ours where we're kind of informing the user, entertaining the user, and educating the user um, would be that kind of crawl, walk, run to when, hey, I need you to help us with contact tracing. All that information is, is given to the user. Uh, they're empowered to share that with whomever they want to. Uh, we felt like that uh, might have been a recipe for uh, a successful uh, launch um, and management of a contact tracing solution. So the verdict is still out. We'll see. We'll see if. Um, something like this would ever uh, be useful and would ever see the light of day. Um, but, uh, but it's a story that I, I wanted to share and I wanted to get feedback uh, from this community. Um, and uh, if there's anybody that wants to, uh, wants to test out the solution on their phone and, and, uh, and sign up to be a beta tester of this, I think that's something we'd be very interested in. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's where we're at. So that's about uh, my time. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for allowing me to share this story. Uh, and I'm very hopeful that uh, some of you will join us for the Q&A uh, and you can poke holes in the solution or, or maybe uh, put some wind in our sails to keep going or, or tell me why we were wrong and tell me why uh, you think uh, it didn't work. Um, uh, and I'd love to share with you some of our game ideas and, and things that uh, we had in the works that uh, we were really, really excited about that I wasn't able to share here. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, thank you again for your time.